Cisco's new exams and certifications are coming on February 24th next year. And if you're thinking about getting your CCNP, you may be concerned about whether you have enough time or not. Rest assured, you do. Even if you don't have your CCNA yet, you can start now, get your CCNA in a couple months, and then start and finish your CCNP before the deadline. In a previous video, I outlined my process for getting the CCNA in eight weeks. In this video, I'll do the same for each of the CCNP routing and switching exams in the order I completed them, which is route, switch, and then T-shoot. You can switch the order of route and switch, but I highly recommend leaving T-shoot for the end, as you will use the knowledge gained in route and switch in that exam. From start to finish, I completed the CCNP in 12 weeks. Five weeks each for route and switch, and two weeks for T-shoot. However, if you don't have a lot of spare time to study, you should expect to take longer than that. Anyway, let's get started. Before I go through each exam, I want to say that labbing in Packet Tracer is not sufficient for the CCNP. You will want to use GNS3. In order to practice switch configurations in GNS3, however, you will need to get the Cisco viral images. I will put a link to viral in the description. You can, of course, just use viral, but what's more common is to use the viral images in GNS3. This video won't be a tutorial on how to do that. I recommend David Bomble's videos on how to do that. I will leave a link in the description once again. Also, please consider making flashcards with the application Anki throughout your studies. I find that Anki is extremely helpful when trying to remember the huge amount of info covered in these exams. Check out my previous video for a guide on how to use Anki in your studies. The route exam is the first exam of the three that I took. Personally, I found this to be the most difficult, but I did manage to pass the exam on my first attempt, and so can you. My first resource was networklessons.com, made by CCIE Rene Molinar. I didn't recommend this website in my CCNA video, because I wasn't aware of the site when I was studying for my CCNA. However, I assume the CCNA course is excellent also. This is the main page, and if you go to Courses, then Cisco, you can see it covers everything from CCNA to CCIE, plus some others. Let's check the CCNP route course. This course covers pretty much everything you need to know, with very clear and detailed explanations, including videos and practice labs you can set up in GNS3. Take your time and work through the whole course, and you'll be in good shape to move on to the next phase of preparation. There is even a practice exam, which wasn't there when I took the course. After you have finished Renee's course, I recommend using the next few resources simultaneously. First is Boson's NetSim for CCNP. Making your own labs in GNS3 is essential. However, I also think completing labs designed by others is very helpful too. This product can actually replace GNS3 for the CCNP, as it is a network simulator similar to Packet Tracer, but more robust, allowing you to configure things which you can't in Packet Tracer. But more importantly, it includes tons of pre-made labs for you to complete, with instructions and detailed answers. Go through all of these labs, then if you have time, do it again. I also once again recommend Boson's practice exams. Like the CCNA practice exams, the quality of these exams is amazing and simulates the difficulty of the real exams quite well. Like I said in my CCNA video, complete one of the exams, check your weak points in the score analysis, study your weak points, and then take the next exam and repeat the process. There are four practice exams available. Now, how should you study your weak points? To be honest, in many cases a Google search will give you many great resources to learn from. However, what I really recommend for the CCNP and above is Cisco's documentation, available on their website. Here, for example, is an EIGRP configuration guide. You don't need to know everything here, but if you're having trouble with EIGRP, you're guaranteed to find some answers in here. You can find Cisco documentation directly on their website and also through a Google search. That's all I used for the route exam. There are, of course, other resources out there, 
but these worked well for me, so if you're not sure what to use, give them a try. Now, onto the switch exam. This exam is more narrow than the route exam. However, it tends to go more deep into each topic. To be honest, the resources I mentioned here will essentially mirror what I recommended for route. Once again, for your start, I recommend networklessons.com. Here is the switch course. Work through this course as your first resource while recreating the labs, as well as your own original labs in GNS3. Then, I again recommend working through Boson's NetSim labs for Switch. Again, plenty of great pre-made labs for you to practice. While you're working through them, take Boson's Switch practice exams, following the same process I mentioned in the route section. Take one exam, analyze your weak points, study your weak points, and then take the next exam. Once again, there are four practice exams available. Now, for Switch, there is one particularly good resource, which is highly recommended by myself and others. It is the 3750 Switch Configuration Guide on Cisco's site. If you work through this guide diligently, focusing on your weak points, but also your strong points if you have time, you should be able to take the Switch exam with confidence. I'll leave a link to this guide in the description. This is really the holy grail of study resources for this exam. After you have finished your route and switch exams, I recommend taking T-Shoot shortly after. You don't actually have to learn anything new for the T-Shoot exam. Basically, you just have to be able to troubleshoot all of the things you learned in the previous two exams. I spent only two weeks preparing for this exam, and it was almost 100% labbing using Boson's NetSim and XSim products. First, work through the NetSim labs. They start with some general troubleshooting labs for different exam topics, but my favorite part is the troubleshooting tickets, of which there are 15. These tickets use virtually the same topology as in the real T-Shoot exam, which is actually available online, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. These labs will help you get familiar with the topology, which will make the exam that much easier when you actually take it. Work through all of these labs, and do them twice if you can. Then, take Boson's practice exams for T-Shoot. These are almost identical to the real exam. Again, you will have to solve troubleshooting tickets using a lab topology that is near identical to the real exam, as well as a few multiple choice questions testing various knowledge from route and switch, which also appear on the real exam. These practice exams will prepare you for the real exam like nothing else. That's it for T-Shoot. Of course, if there are any specific topics you don't remember well from the previous exams, you should take time to review your previous study materials, but other than that, you really don't have to take much time between your second exam and T-Shoot. That's all for this video. If you have any questions or want some advice, feel free to leave a comment. I do my best to answer every single one. Good luck with your studies.